Hi, I'm Sean Rice from the International Tour of the Adams Family, and thank you for watching Living Out of Suitcases. This week I'll be showing you some great smartphone apps that will make your life on the road a lot easier. We'll be killing some time with one of my favorite laptop iPad games, and you'll find out what it's like to be an understudy for a Broadway show. But first, with all that cold weather coming down from the polar vortex, we were very lucky to spend a very warm and sunny golden day in Charleston, South Carolina. Founded in 1670 in honor of King Charles II of England, Charleston is the oldest and second largest city in South Carolina. Known for its rich history, well-preserved architecture, distinguished restaurants, and good old southern hospitality, Charleston has been dubbed America's most friendly city. Its beauty and inviting nature has made it a popular backdrop for a wide range of novels, plays, movies, and TV shows. From the opera Porgy and Bess, to the 2004 hit The Notebook, to TNT's Falling Skies. We started our trip with a visit to the city market, with shops lining both sides of Market Street and four blocks of open-air flea market-style buildings in the center. The city market is frequented by both locals and tourists, who can find everything from local fare, jewelry, handmade pottery, and even hand-woven sweet grass baskets. For the more upscale shopper, only a block away is King Street, where all your favorite boutique stores can be found. But while you're on Market Street, be sure to stop in at the Low Country Bistro, named one of the city's top restaurants. In here you'll find nothing but southern charm and southern cooking, and you can sample local delicacies, like the luscious and velvety she-crab soup or the classic chicken and waffles. Another fine choice is the well-known Hominy Grill, whose iconic sign and authentic culinary offerings have attracted the attention of locals, tourists, and well-known foodies like Alton Brown and Anthony Bourdain. After lunch, be sure to take a walk along the waterfront to the Battery, where you can see the beautiful architecture of the old southern riverfront mansions and catch a glimpse of historic Fort Sumter. The area is also a huge theater town, and actually houses the oldest theater in the country, the Dock Street Theater. No trip to Charleston would be complete, though, without a ghost tour. There are several offered throughout the city that will take you to some very creepy but beautiful historic sites and cemeteries. Whether you'll actually see a ghost is up in the air, but you'll definitely get a feel for the city's rich history through the tales of old Charleston told by locals who've been passing down these stories for 400 years. Now, of course, I started touring before I owned a smartphone. But when I got one, I was finally introduced to the wonderful world of apps. There are definitely a few out there that make life on the road a lot easier and a lot more fun. This week, I'd like to share a few of them with you. Being a foodie, I like to explore the local cuisine, which can be really hard on a shoestring budget and having no car in most of the cities that I go to. So I use a little app called Urban Spoon. Urban Spoon is a free app that lets you check out restaurants near to you and sort them by distance or type of restaurant. You can look at menus, you can look at pictures, reviews, all that sort of thing, then pick the one you like, send the directions to your phone, and have it lead you there. If you're feeling really adventurous, use the shake option. Just give your phone a shake and the app will pick a random restaurant from its local favorites. Sometimes though, it's late or raining, and I just want to stay in my hotel room and have something ordered in and watch some TV. So then I turn to Seamless or Grubhub. Both of these apps work pretty much the same way. They will find local restaurants near to you that will deliver. And uh, you can browse menus, look at reviews, all that kind of thing. You can order right through the app. You can pay for it and have it delivered right to your hotel room. Right now, they're fairly new, so they only work in major city metropolitan areas. But they are always expanding their area and their pool of restaurants. So when you get to a new town, give it a try. If I'm in a fancier mood, I pop open Open Table. Open Table is an app that lets you browse local restaurants that make reservations. You can make a reservation for that restaurant right on the phone. And you can look through menus and reviews and things like that to help you make your choice. But the best thing about Open Table is that for every reservation that you make and keep Keep, you will earn points and if you earn enough points they will send you a gift certificate that you can use at any restaurant that uses the open table app Foursquare seriously it's not just for posting checked in statuses on Facebook and Twitter I use Foursquare to chronicle my travels it's a great way to keep track of all the places that I enjoy or don't enjoy on the road everywhere you go be it restaurants museums movie theaters parks hotels anywhere you can give and read reviews it also tells you if people that you know have checked into that location recently I've actually run into a couple Couple friends at airports by checking into Foursquare and finding out that they had also just checked into Foursquare on a layover, it's kind of cool to run into someone that way. Or you can keep track of your friends if you split up doing your touristy things on the road. Your Banks app. It's 2014. Most banks have an app now. Some are more advanced than others, but at the very least they'll be able to help you track down the nearest ATM or branch location for your bank. My bank, Chase, lets me do banking online via my phone, which is very, very useful if you live on the road. I can actually set up limits on my checking account 
and the banking app will notify me immediately if my checking account drops below that limit. I can also use it to electronically deposit checks just by taking a picture of the front and back of the check. And that's been a lifesaver in several situations. Roadside America. Now while all the other apps that I've talked about are free, this one is a paid app and it draws from the website of the same name. So you can either you know, go ahead and buy it, it's not that expensive, or you can just do what I do sometimes and uh, log out on the website and get your information there for free. RoadsideAmerica.com But as you travel around the country, this app or this website will help you find some really interesting, fun, cheap or free things to do that you can only do in that area. It's set up to find roadside attractions. The world's largest ketchup bottle around St. Louis, Missouri. Tree stumps carved into the shape of townsfolk in Wichita, Kansas. Or even the Museum of Swallowed Things in Lima, Ohio. These are all really cool places that I found on Roadside America. Hopefully this list of apps will add to your enjoyment on the road and make your life a little more manageable. Settlers of Catan is a very popular and well-known board game about land expansion in the ever-changing world of Catan. Well, now there's a version that you can play on your laptop or tablet. You can connect online to play with friends or complete strangers, or you can use the pass around version to play with friends right there on the bus with you, or you can just play against some computerized characters, and you can set the level of those characters from easy to kick your ass. In Settlers of Catan, you start up by building settlements in areas that will give you resources throughout the game. You do this by owning the longest road, building settlements, having the largest army, or collecting victory points by buying settlement cards. These resources can be used to help you build roads, build more settlements, or expand your settlements into cities. Now the land will only produce resources when the number assigned to that land is rolled on the die at the beginning of every player's turn. Which means you need to make nice with your competitors at least long enough to trade your stockpile of things for the other things that you need to get ahead. It's a really fun game, and the artwork and the soundtrack and the animation that they've added for this uh, tablet or laptop version really adds to the enjoyment of the game. I've definitely spent many hours in the bus settling Catan. Now why don't you give it a try? I'm Uncle Fester from the Adams Family, and here at the Adams Family we have a lot of people who do a lot of jobs. Some of our actors even have two jobs. I have with us right here two of our special actors who are also understudies. This is Julia. Hello. And you play the bride. That's correct. And this is Stephen. Hello. And he plays the caveman. Now, Julia, uh, what exactly is an understudy? An understudy is someone who goes on for one of the principal roles if they are sick or injured. Um, so we learn the entire track. I cover Wednesday and Alice. So if they are ever unable to do the show, I would do it for them. That sounds exciting. <laughs> and Stephen, who do you understudy? I understudy you. You understudy me? I do. You play Fester? I do. How does it feel to play uh, understudy the most important role in the show? It's challenging. Yes. Yes, I it's bet it is. Like so, Julia, what kind of things do you have to do to prepare to be an understudy? Oh, we have to memorize all of their lines, their blocking, their choreography, their music, um, everything. Their makeup plots, if they have special makeup, uh, quick changes, all of it. The whole track. Wow. <laughs> now, now, Stephen, my last understudy, um, his family was willing once to pay me to pretend to be sick so he could go on. Do you think that your family might be willing to do the same sort of thing? Possibly. Depends on how much you're looking for. Um, probably in double digits, pro possibly triple digits. I think we can make it happen. That's a wonderful answer! <laughs> okay, so Julia, um, tell me exactly, so when, when you are um, in the rehearsals, are, are there only other understudies there, or are there uh, principal actors with you, helping you along, or how does that work? Uh, typically we will have an understudy rehearsal with all of the other understudies. Um, those don't happen very often, so more often than that we'll have a put-in with the actual actors. So if I know, for example, I'm going in for Wednesday, I would do certain numbers as Wednesday with the rest of the ensemble cast that would be in the show with me that day. So you don't get to rehearse like uh, everyone else, like it's a normal show? No. Is that terrifying? Do you sit at home at night crying, thinking that you might have to go on at a moment's notice? Sometimes. Oh, wonderful. 
<laughs> so, Stephen, so since you understudy me, let's see a little bit of Fester. Can you whip him out for us? <laughs> you know, I'm still working on capturing the essence. Well, obviously, it's going to take years and years to get it perfect. But let's see a little moon in me. <laughs> uh, you're paying. I'm feeling sick. I'm feeling sick. Uh, when the day widens and the moon, my do it. That's wonderful. <laughs> well, thank you guys so much. You're Thanks, welcome, Uncle Fester. Fester. <laughs> Okay, thank you for stopping by this week. Don't forget to come by on Wednesday for Adam's Family Portraits and next week for Gaming Out of Suitcases. If you enjoyed today's episode, please like, comment, share with your friends, and subscribe to my channel. And as always, if there are any interesting places that you know of in the places that we're about to visit, please let me know down in the comments. Ta-ta for now, and stay warm!